Baby shark doot doot doo 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 baby shark doot doot doo 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 baby shark doot doot doo 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 baby shark Shark attack doot doot doo 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 shark attack doot doot doo 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 shark attack doot doot doo 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 shark attack Lady Bob and doot doot when the schlock hits your eye like a big a pizza pie, that's amore. What is up, everybody? That is what they sing in the place that we are going to be talking about today where our movie takes place. No, it's not Bulgaria where this movie was filmed. It, it is Venice where this movie takes place. We are talking about the 2008 uh, absolute schlock flick shark in venice what is up guys i am darby ellis lewis wilson this is chris anonymous and below me joining us clear from the lance of the obscure movie guy what, what's your what, what's it called lance the obscure movie guy channel podcast what do you do what's up I do, have, I do have a podcast i got both <laughs> well uh while we're on the subject uh, before we kick into everything, I, I just want to thank you for coming here. We we are doing a special, what is it, five-episode deal for the month of July. We like to call it Shark Month because Shark Week will be – has Shark Week started or is that uh, next week? I think Shark Week is officially in August, but uh, that's – In August? Man, yeah, was, screwed up. Well, here's the thing. So Shark Week is Discovery Channel. And then National Geographic is doing like Shark Fest this month, mm-hmm. which is like two weeks. So they had to one up Discovery. Yeah. So well, we're, we're welcome to Shark Fest. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're doing a whole month. Well, so we have our special guest with us for this month. We're going to be looking at five different schlocky shark exploitation movies. That's very hard for me to say. Uh, last week, we looked at Jaws. This week, we're looking at Shark in Venice. Week after that, we're looking at uh, Santa Jaws. So get ready for Christmas in July. Then something very important I have to tell you, we are doing a viewer's choice, an audience pick. So you guys need to tell us what your favorite schlocky shark movies are. I don't even care if you've seen them. You just got to start throwing them out there and tell us what we need to watch for that special week. And then we are going to be ending it with uh, kind of a, a schlockbuster, uh, The Meg, getting ready for The Meg 2, I believe, will be coming out in August. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to get back to you, Lance. Your channel, you review obscure movies. Uh, what what do you have coming up? Anything special? I know you just did some, some killer bots thing, how art imitates life. Uh, did some Godzilla stuff because... Pluto TV has a Godzilla channel coming up. What is in the works for Lance OMG? Uh, you know, I've got so many ideas just running through my head all the time. I, I have a hard time trying to figure out which ones I want to do next. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I think what I'm going to work on next is, is movies that I would actually like to see be made. Um, stuff oh. that is fairly even like it hasn't been done, but good stories that could potentially make good films or even sequels that I wish would have been made uh, from movies in the past that never got done for whatever reason. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Um, I am trying to edit my latest podcast about the uh, DC universe and that whole debacle and what's going on <laughs> with brothers. Um, yeah. that, that's just a complete mess. And I, I put that on the podcast because it just it, it it takes so much detail and time to talk about the mess that is Warner Brothers right now. There's no way I could fit it all into yeah. just, you know, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, it's sure. it's well, <laughs> it's a we lot going to go a little bit longer tonight. We we aren't going to we aren't going 10 minutes tonight. We're going we're going the full length with this movie and so i need to tell everybody before we jump in there are going to absolutely be spoilers for this movie so if if you if you didn't want it ruined uh well if you don't want it ruined don't watch it but uh if you if you're in for a a schlocky good time watch this movie and and listen to what we have to say about it um i just want to say the 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 uh the jaws review 
did really well. Thank you all so much for showing up and commenting and, and watching the video. We got a great spike. We got some new uh, subscribers. And guess what, guys? We are a very small channel still. So when we just get one subscriber, we're like, oh, my God, I like call up Chris and stuff and, and tell him. So if if that's you, if if you're one of the new subscribers or, or even if you've been here for a long time and you haven't said anything, uh, comment. Uh, let us know that you're here so that we can thank you for being around and and thank you for coming on this weird, wild journey with us. Uh, so the way the show goes, uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed, uh, we talk about the good, the bad, and the schlock of weird, uh, bad, campy, indie B-movies. Uh, but first, before we get into all of that, we like to talk about the web of schlock, where these people have come from, where they went, and if we've seen them before on this show. Chris, what do you have for us in the web of schlock? We're going to talk about two things. So uh, <laughs> first off is uh, Stephen Baldwin, mm -hmm. who uh, I I think he's underrated. I, I thoroughly enjoy Stephen Baldwin. He's been in a lot of great movies. Uh, Usual Suspects, he was really fun in. Uh, he was in the Flintstones in the 90s, uh, Biodome. I mean, just Biodome. Uh, this, this movie called Fled, I remember from the 90s, kind of this action movie, just all sorts of stuff, but I always enjoy him when he, uh, when he appears, I think he doesn't, uh, he maybe he's a little outshined by his brother, but, uh, he's, he's an awesome, awesome actor. And I thoroughly enjoy him. How many, uh, how many Baldwin brothers are there? Three. Uh, well, I don't know how many actual brothers are, but acting wise, there's of course, Alec and then Steven. Okay. I assume it's Steven, although it's a PH, so it could be Stefan. I could be just saying it wrong, but, uh, we'll go with Steven. Steven and then, uh, Billy or William Baldwin, who I think was in, sliver in the 90s and yeah i've seen him in a couple other things there's also a daniel baldwin as well the older okay. fatter is, is right. adam baldwin is he one of the bald baldwin brothers he he played a uh, jane on a uh, uh firefly I, I do not think he is okay but i'm see, not a hundred percent see i always get confused between all the baldwins especially between uh Fat Alec Baldwin and skinny Alec Baldwin. I always think they're like two different people. I was like, Who's no, no, not? the guy in Beetlejuice. No, 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 not not Jack Lemon. Is that his name from Thirty Rock? Uh, the guy in Beetlejuice. You know, no, he <laughs> is a Baldwin. <laughs> so we're getting way off track. So there's there's the actor. But what I really want to talk about is the um, the producer and the co-writer of this film. Uh, Les Weldon. So this movie had a lot of potential. That's all I'll say. And then I want to read some of <laughs> some of his producing credits. So before this, he did uh, in 2001, he was a co-producer on uh, a Van Damme movie called The Order. Okay. And then there was a movie called Raging Sharks that he produced. Right. And then a couple right. more uh, looks like The Cutter and I. Um, Shark in Venice, and then uh, Train, Direct Contact, a bunch of movies you've never heard of, right? But then in mm -hmm. 2010, he's an executive producer on The Expendables. Hmm. Then Conan, The Barbarian remake. Then Expendables 2. Then The Legend of Hercules. Then Expendables 3. Then London Has Fallen. Um, Security, The Hitman's Bodyguard, Leatherface, Act of Vengeance, Bullethead, Day of the Dead Bloodline. Uh, Hellboy, the remake of Hellboy, Angel Has Fallen, Rambo Last Blood, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, and he just keeps keeps going. So, like, it's really interesting to, like, he's had some major movies. Yeah. As a some producer. Miss. Some misses, but it's just interesting to see, like, this felt very much like a stepping stone to, like, um, um, bigger and better things. And, like, I think that big big a blockbuster movie story sense was in this movie. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they pulled it off, but it was there. And the director, um, he passed away in 2015, but he also had a similar uh, trajectory and they were also um, more, he was more of a producer and uh, produced along with a lot of these same films. And it's just really interesting to see like, this is somewhere where they came from. Cause it feels like you could make this movie and go nowhere and you could make this movie and go somewhere amazing where they did. Like mm -hmm. that's a legit uh, career. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, man, for sure. There, there's another person in here that's worth mentioning. Uh, speaking of of ties to blockbusters, so the, the fiance Vanessa Johansson Johansson is the sister of Scarlett Johansson. I don't know how you say it. It's Johansson, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just interesting factoid. Huh. Uh, Nice. See, nice. Yeah, I I can see why it went the way it did. Uh, so, <laughs> is is that all we have for the web? Of that's Schlock? that's that's all every right. web of shock. We got so much to talk about. I just those are the yeah. two uh, main points, and we're moving on. Well, a lot see. of the other cast were like, I don't know if it was because it felt like an Italian production, and I felt like a lot of these people weren't in a lot of other films, at least not American films. And or mm-hmm. like English might be their second language if they spoke it at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. It just felt like they hired all their actors on location. And it felt like one of those movies where like the stars American and like half the things filmed in American and the other half, like feels kind of dub. Like, I don't know if, if, if these people were actually their real voices, I did. Yeah. So, well, we're, we're, we're getting into a lot of stuff I'd like to talk about. But first, and we're going to do that in Schlock, but first, uh, talk about the good and the bad. Uh, let's face it, folks, a lot of these movies aren't the greatest movies to ever be made. Uh, but we don't, we don't want to just be naysayers. We want to, we want to pull out uh, some nuggets from these as well. And so I will start with the good, and then I'll go into the bad. Uh, so just to start all this off, I want to say I hate this movie. This might be my least favorite movie that we've watched on this show over doing it for like two years and maybe one of the worst movies I've ever seen as far as my watching career goes. And here's why this is part of the good. Here's why Uh, this movie it's, it wasn't bad because it didn't have, talent in it or uh, a budget of some kind i feel like it had all of the things it needed to be a good movie but it just wasn't like everything was just slightly off and so for my very first good like i think this is actually a really cool concept uh i think by for some reason turning it into a shark exploitation movie was a really bad direction to go but you could take the shark out of 90 percent of this And you have a very interesting um, Indiana Jones, National Treasure, Da Vinci Code type uh, type story. And you and yes, you could have put a shark in at the end. Like I I was thinking that it was probably put there by the uh, Medici. Is that who it is? The Medici folks to guard the treasure. And so it's like this ancient shark that that is floating around. That is not the case. Uh, I think that would have made a better movie. But uh, but yeah, I, I think that's a cool concept. And and talk about movies that, that uh, should maybe be made. Maybe that movie should be made. Um, and then my second good, and I and I have a picture of this. I call it the dangle foot. Uh, when they're doing the flashback to the medieval fighting, so there there's some there's some noticeable costume mess ups in there where they like have um, like uh, 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 what, what are those, what are those glittering things that women wear? Uh, Not jewels, but uh, help me out here, fellas. Sequins. There we go. That's what we got. Their, their armor is like made of, of gray, silvery, shiny sequins, right. As opposed to real metal. Um, You mean they, they weren't made of sequins back in the day? I don't think so. Oh I man! Think, I think they're made of links of metal. My you whole know, world to protect you has just been completely torn apart. But yeah, we uh, if if we can get it up, we have a picture of of this part where they're going through and they're actually being pretty brutal and chopping people up. I mean, some some of them you see some pulled punches, but this guy gets his foot like chopped completely off. Well, not completely because it starts to just dangle there. <laughs> And, and yep. like th- th- this, this shot makes it look maybe more intense 
than it is. Like if you if you go over like a half a second in in the movie, it's just like dangling there, which actually might be like super real. I don't know. Like that, <laughs> I, I've never seen someone get an appendage chopped off, so maybe they do dangle. I don't know, but I I thought for the most part, just look at this picture. Everything looks pretty legit in it, other than the and then the dangly foot. Um, but other than that, that is that's it. That's all the good I have for this movie. Uh, what nuggets do you guys have? Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, you you hit a lot of it, you know, from the get go. I mean, the the storyline is. Not terrible. Uh, the the movie could have gone completely without the shark, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. It could have gone, like you said, with just the the ancient beings putting the shark there as like this old being to like protect the treasure. But it was, you know, just put there by the bad guy to be his watchdog, as he says. Um, yeah. But I mean, some of the other good things. I mean, you know, like you said, talent aside, I I think the opening like. The opening credits of this film, you know, it was probably just stock footage from other aerial shots, but the opening credits looked really good. You got really good shots of what is supposed to be Venice, Mm -hmm. you know, these good aerial shots and the production value on that looked good. And then you get, you know, your opening scene with Stephen Baldwin. And I think that flowed really well. The first few minutes of this movie is pretty good. But it went downhill mm-hmm. very quick. <laughs> At the it did, it o- Oceanatorium wrong- University yeah. or whatever it was. <laughs> so right. I think we all have the same good, and that's the concept. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a, and I'll talk about this concept in Bad and in Schlock, but I really, really liked the concept. And the other thing I liked was the the location. Uh, even though it might not have been filmed completely in, in Venice, it's a very picturesque location and we have a picture of it and uh, just any movie set here. I'm, I'm going to be, it's getting an extra point because it's just a really cool place It is, an and getting to see that area. on, on screen. Like that's, that's just so cool looking. Like you could set so many movies here. You could set a, a better written, better, but uh, bigger budget version of this where it's not, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> shark in venice because that's not what this movie's about uh and it would be amazing like this has a very almost like da vinci code vibe here mm-hmm. like yeah. are like even like a mission impossible i could totally see like some yeah. cool action sequence set in the in the canals of uh, venice well so I, I got a question for you guys uh so this was filmed in in belgium or i'm sorry uh bulgaria they start with b uh bulgaria because it was cheaper and i think i think there's a lot of stuff that's filmed that way in bullywood i think is what it's called um are there canals in bulgaria i've i've never seen it i don't know not not to the be- because <laughs> because yeah. they do have so many canal shots yeah where, i where i they- wonder if some of this was actually filmed in in venice yeah i mean there's there are shots that are clearly like stock footage and clearly green screen together but then there are some i'm like I don't know how they'd get that shot if they weren't just actually there or, or weren't just actually on a canal that also looks like a busy street. Right. Right. So, but yeah, that's really all I have for good. Okay. Well, let's move into the bad. Uh, I think, uh, I think this will take up about the rest of our runtime here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Lance, you, you mentioned it. The fact that the sharks are the watchdogs. Uh, instead instead of a single shark protecting the treasure, spoiler, what is actually going on is the mafia who is trying to find the treasure. They didn't want divers to find the di- treasure to find the treasure. So they put a bunch of sharks in the water to keep divers out. But yet their plan to find the treasure was to go diving. That is be, the stupidest thing I, I could possibly think of. To be fair, they put in baby sharks and then wait for them <laughs> to grow bigger so they can't escape somehow. And also, I think we were about five seconds away from the, the main villain trying to put lasers on the sharks. <laughs> now that that would have substantially freaking laser beams on their heads. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, well, let, yeah, let, let me keep going with some dumb things. 
uh, they had a terrible use of, of their budget. I kind of mentioned that before, terrible use of, of their time and budget. And as far as big ending action sequences go, they they spend it all on this uh, on this shootout between people who we don't know who they are. We don't care about them. It's not really like a part of the story that we've been following. But they're like, hey, we got to have a big ending shootout. What would have been cooler? Sharks with lasers on their heads. I mean, <laughs> I think they could have done it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, they have uh, these big ineffective plot holes. Talk about the the stupid the stupid mafia plan uh, right at the the very beginning when we get introduced to our main character and he's he's teaching the class on diving. I guess I don't know. He has the student that is like very aggressive. And they have like this aggressive exchange, like, oh, I could dive that far. Like, yeah, but could you dive that far in shark infested waters? And like the way they were doing it, I thought like, oh, this guy is going to go on the trip with them, right? Because that's building like some some push and pull between characters, you know, cocky young guy, uh, wizened professor. No, that that's that just goes to it's just there to show that that our Baldwin like knows more about diving than other people. And then we get his fiance who is just like a horrible tag along for the whole movie through the, through the whole movie. I'm just like, who is this person? Why is she here? Why is she speaking for him? Like it's, (laughs) it, it totally felt like an actual trip somewhere where someone (laughs) has like a loud wife and just like, honey, 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 don't stop yelling at the waiters. Uh, they don't understand us. <laughs> and I, I, I wanted her out of there. I would have taken the cocky student any day. Um, and probably the biggest plot hole, I, I think, maybe you guys can help me out here. The dad, he goes looking for his dad. He looks at the bodies. His dad isn't one of the bodies. What happens to his dad? I mean, he's dead, man. He's dead. They found his watch. That's, That's all you need to know. The shark <laughs> ate him and he threw I mean, the watch back up because it wasn't a high end enough watch to eat. Could, that, could they that, not? That dead giveaway. They found the watch. Clearly, he's been deceived. He could have never yeah. survived without his watch. Uh, couldn't, couldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't it have been a great scene if once he goes and finds the treasure, he finds, uh, you know, a bloody his, scuba suit with his dad and, and his dad is dead. And he's like, you finally found it, dad. You did it. You did it. <laughs> or, or is this one's for you? Me. One-eyed Willie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it had a very Goonies vibe in it when, when he's finding it, like the octopus in Goonies, the, the secret octopus, the shark, right. This movie could have been great. This um, movie could have been amazing. And last but not least, I, I, I mentioned it. Um, the the camera work in this it looks like a sitcom. It I I in fact it was very hard for me to follow what was going on. I had to go back and rewatch a few parts <laughs> because I was like trying to dissect like why does this look wrong? Like the it, blocking is horrendous. It doesn't look cinematic and 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 no, I think it looks like a st- looks like a high school stage play where it's like the people just step awkwardly into camera and then at an odd angle next to the person they're having the conversation Mm -hmm. with. Yeah. It's, it's, it takes you out of, you're like, Oh, this isn't real at all. Yeah. And they're like, their deliveries are so cardboard and you're like, Oh, Steven, (laughs) hi, I'm sorry. You got to work with these people, bro. Well, like I I, I'm looking at, I'm thinking, I think everything is like technically correct, but not just every, just everything is off 10%. (laughs) Very, it was very amateurish. Yeah. And, like, and that's that, like they walk in, they're like, huh, hi, you know, like it's very, yeah, like, yeah, the, the full body turn, right? Like, oh, hello there. <laughs> what are you oh, hi, the, oh, hi, Sharky. Oh, hi, Shark. <laughs> oh, hi, Shark. <laughs> shark. <laughs> and, and so I, I think you brought it up earlier that, that clearly they were hiring people. And, and if you look through the credits and at the names, these are people that they found. Uh, These were in, bulk <laughs> in Bulgaria, which is doesn't like automatically mean something bad, but it probably means they they don't have Hollywood resources, right? 
Um, and I said that was my last bad, but I looked down. I have a whole other list of bad stuff. Uh, <laughs> bad editing. There's terrible editing, and specifically when the sharks attack. Like, Dude, it's, it's okay. stock footage. Lance is having a conniption. No, the, the, the sharks killed me, though, because... <laughs> Like you can tell, like they're just using like stock footage from like a National Geographic spot. What I like, love is yeah. like the sharks are in like a clear sort of water, and everyone else is in a murky water. Right? <laughs> well, and they and they just mash the the clips up so crazy, and it's like super disorienting, which sort of makes sense technically. That's yeah, probably correct way to do it, but it's just like I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's all, all the, the same clip. Look the same. It, yeah, they keep playing the same clip over again. Uh, Stephen Baldwin apparently loses a leg at some point in time. Well, no, no, I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> and then and then comes back. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, just tons of stock footage. In it. The sound in it was stock. Um, so the music just doesn't feel right anywhere. Just everything. Oh man, just 10%. the choir that appears every time like they find something. It's just so over yeah. the top. It's amazing. Um, and my last bad for real this time, and then I'll, I'll let you guys have the floor with bad uh, wardrobe and makeup, man. They, yes. They 100% just missed it. That when I say everything was off 10%, this was off 90%. Like yeah. the, the 10% that they were on was the fact that they were like clothed at all. Well, and the fact that they wore scuba gear to dive, that, that was proper. But do you notice, right? When you're scuba diving and you have this thing in your mouth, you should sound like Bane. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's in their mouth, right? <laughs> like I, they can't talk and, but they're like, Breaker, breaker, one, nine, like <laughs> silly, 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 silly. But the last bad, uh, oh, uh, the, the makeup, uh, we have a picture of some interesting wardrobe makeup choices. Uh, our main villain, he, he's he got some sunglasses and a wig, and I don't know what's going on here. I think this is let's, very clearly a wig. Let's right, stay on this picture when you're yeah, done and let Lance take over. Let's just tear it apart. I have at it, Lance. So, I mean, my my wife mentioned it like that's a bad wig. And I'm like, OK, even if it's a bad wig, wh why does he have a wig to begin with? Like, could, does he not have hair or could he just not have hair? Like, you know what my <laughs> hope is? My hope is that it's not a wig. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> but like, if, oh, if, please. If, let it well, be real. well like, I, I hope that they found him on the street. And this is his real look. And then like the other thing, and I'm not trying to make fun of this guy. I'm, I'm really not. But like, it's very hard to tell if his nose is a prosthetic or not. You know, like, I'm not saying he's got a big nose, but it just, it doesn't look natural. <laughs> this, this man has a very extreme face. I, I will give him that. Um, there's, it is there's a, a perfect lot to take villain in face. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I actually think he was probably pretty good casting. I mean, really. Yeah, um, I, had, had he had some better lines and a, an acting coach, I think he would be mm -hmm. like Bond level villain. <laughs> well, so for his hair, I I think that his hair is real in some scenes because I, I was looking at it like I think it's real there, and so I think he must have done the movie then shaved his head or something, and then you're like, oh, we got to do some more shots. We'll, we'll just put this wig on you, right? Okay, that what kind of the, I that can, makes I, sense. Got some samurai cop action going. What was the movie we watched with the mustache that they had the fake mustache? Oh, uh, man, I can't remember. You know what I'm talking about, though, like yeah. in that one scene. Is it Slithis where the cop comes in? He, it's a cop and he's got like this fake yeah. mustache. Oh, it's a or it's a night. Deadly night. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. No, it was. Yeah, it was the dream sequence in Is one it, of those movies. If you've watched all these episodes and you have much better memories than we do, <laughs> tell us comment and, yeah. and tell us what movie. What, what movie did we watch? It, it might be all of them. I'm sure there's probably a <laughs> there's fake a fake mustache, mustache in all of them. All right, Lance, what other bads do you have? We got to get Darby off the uh, bad bandwagon. He's he's had his Man, he's had his soapbox. Well, I mean, he's 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 not wrong about any of it though. No, uh, he's not. <laughs> it, it's 
here, here's what kills me is, is, is bad acting. Obviously. Um, the fiance was, was terrible. And I but think she's what really re- smart. <laughs> she's really smart. I think is what he says. Well, what really, what really sucks for me is like, I like Stephen Baldwin. I think he's actually a really good actor, but mm-hmm. I think Stephen also feeds off of the energy of mm-hmm. the people around him. So when he's not getting good, if, when he's not reciprocating good acting, he's not giving good acting then, you know, like he's only going to give what he gets is kind of how I look at his career. Yeah, his acting was the best acting in this movie, but he wasn't giving a, a to a dial to 11 performance. Why would you? It's a paycheck. Right. Exactly. You know, and he was counterpoint on that. Uh, I just, I, I think that everyone was trying to act to his level because <laughs> uh, if you notice the way all of the lines are delivered, they're all like, uh, dad is dead. Uh, prof- professor, uh, Oh, baby. Like everyone is speaking. They're speaking at this level. Like they're like they're they're just trying to be like a little too cool. Like they're all trying to speak like a Baldwin, you know? <laughs> and that that very well may be. And it, very, it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it just it just didn't work though. I I mean she might be related to Scarjo, but she was not Scarjo material. She's <laughs> I would have to watch something else with her in it to see how bad or good she really is. But she was pretty awful in this. Well, and you know, that it's kind of hard to judge someone's acting ability in movies like this, because a lot of times they've got one or two takes, right. Mm-hmm. And probably not a lot of rehearsals. So you can have someone like real, like that. You can be like, man, I, that take five was amazing, but you chose to use take three, which I look awful in and, and have a horrible delivery. Why'd you do that? Oh, it was a better shot with lighting. Like, so yeah, so many people came off really bad in this movie, but it, it's hard to qualify it without seeing other people. Like if, if, if this was the only thing I saw of Baldwin, would I think he was a great actor? No, but I know he can do a lot of really cool stuff. Cause I've seen him do it. Yeah. All right. Well, and in her defense, because I've, I've just hammered on her, uh, I think she's had a pretty lucrative career as a voice actress. So does uh, the whole being in front of a camera thing. She, she, she may have decided it's not her gig and she'd rather just do voices. That, may, that makes that sound bad. I, yep. I'm sorry. I tried to turn I tried to make something positive. Ah, it, it's, you, I'm sorry, everybody. Um, it's, it's, you, like the old, it's like the old radio DJ thing. You know, you, you have a voice for radio, you know, or a face for radio. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we gotta we gotta move on. We're getting we're getting too mean. Oh man, do you have any other bad things that are not gonna fall into schlock lands? Uh, I I think most of the stuff's probably gonna fall into schlock at this point. All right, let me let me Let's, say my two cents and bad, and then we'll go to schlock. If that works for you, uh, you guys have mentioned most of it, so I'm not gonna retread it. Uh, I I will retread the costumes. I thought their choice of like what the leads were wearing just was just awful. Like it just looked like they, they woke up and threw some clothes on what, you know, and like, it's laundry day. I'll just wear this. Um, But my main bad is that this is not a shark in Venice. A shark in Venice is a, is jaws in a city, which is such a cool idea, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, what if the streets are water and there's a killer shark in them? And you've got to leave home. You've got to get to the doctor. You've got to go out and live your life. Like, and it terrorizes the locals, right? That's what that movie is. Yeah. That's not what, that's what we got advertised. That is not what this is. What this is, is uh, an Indiana Jones wannabe ripoff. And I think it could make a really cool national treasure, Indiana Jones. I really liked the story, but the problem is, is calling this shark in Venice is like calling Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones and a pit of snakes. <laughs> right. Yeah, that happens. Sure does. That but that's not. Movie. Yeah, it's in the movie, but that's really missing the point of what the movie's about. And I think I think you really could have had a cool, cool movie. Yeah. So that was my main bad is just 
it's not, it doesn't deliver on what it says it's going to deliver besides the fact that yes, they're in Venice and yes, there is a shark. So on a very technical level, they deliver, but beyond that, it's like, that's not what this is. And I think you would have done better to make that or to re refocus what you were on. It's so weird that when they're creating this movie that they have this very interesting concept for why would they, I mean, they're very clearly trying to go the shark exploitation route, right? By putting shark in the, like it's a cheesy title. Like, why do you think that they would, would try and I guess get, get that genre, get that crowd, that very specific crowd. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know because that doesn't, the, an Indiana Jones movie might not appeal to just because Spielberg did Indiana Jones and Jaws doesn't mean that the same audience is going to like both. Right. <laughs> That's clearly what they were going for with this one. <laughs> right. We take the two best Spielberg movies and we combine them. Huh? Huh? I mean, that does sound like a winner. <laughs> all right well let's let's move on to schlock uh I, I think we got some time we got some schlock time uh we started late but but i think that's all right i think everyone's here for a good time um what uh what do you have lance for the schlock where are you at well i'm all over the place man uh you know so towards the end of the movie <laughs> you've got this uh you got this chase for whatever reason, like the henchmen are chasing, you know, Stephen Baldwin through the back alleys oh, of yeah. Bulgaria slash Venice, and like, and they're they're running it's like this the same corridor that they're using, but they try using like different angles, so it's like it's they're trying to make it look like it's multiple corridors, but it's just the same right. one over again. <laughs> it's like. I don't know if it's supposed to be the same one that he's going back to, or if it's trying to be a different one, but like in the whole, that whole scenario was very odd to me because it's like, they want to catch him so he can go diving for the treasure, but they're shooting at him. Like, right. and then like beating him like, to death. Like, it, right, yeah. right. like, what do you want from this guy? Like you kind of need him alive, but he's not going to be able to do shit if you're beating him to death. <laughs> I absolutely lost it when uh, he gets chased into like the wood shop and the bad guy starts up a chainsaw. And what does he choose to protect himself with? A chair. Like a wooden chair. I'm like, that's exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Not one wooden chair. He cuts <laughs> through the first wooden chair and, and Mr. Baldwin doubles down and gets a second wooden chair. You know, fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. Right? cut through my chair twice shame on me yeah no that is definitely schlock now that i'm thinking maybe i like this movie a lot, a lot more than i thought like that was pretty funny i i had a, i had a little bellyache from laughing at that uh yeah it, it does it, it does try to do some comedy i don't know if that was on purpose <laughs> that that bit of comedy i don't but think it does try to have some comedy Done on purpose <laughs> you don't think you don't think so what about what about the very uh end shot where they're like okay we're gonna get married i can't wait for our honeymoon and they're like as long as it's not in venice <laughs> and he takes out the the jewelry that he just stole from the treasure that they've all right. been looking for and gives it to her like let's put it on here honey <laughs> no okay what about what about the double agent cop that makes no sense. Like, why is she have him protected and guarded? And then she knows that they're going to break in and do this, like, right. like cat burglar, like shoot a shoot a rope across and then shimmy over the water. Like, it was it was some Pink Panther level type stuff. I'm like, was that's she that's undercover? amazing. Was she was she like trying to infiltrate? But it, no, she I, was a, she was a bad guy. And then they like, yeah, but she decided to kind of save us at the end so she's okay in our books well yeah the, the, she's laying on the gurney and the the chief of police or whatever he's like oh she she told us a confession or whatever that you can corroborate uh, what what do you think and they're like no nah, she's okay my, she saved our lives i'm sitting there <laughs> thinking like she got a lot of people killed like <laughs> did, did he did the chief remind you of like a non-union european vince vaughn now that you mention it, yes, yes, he did. 
<laughs> I was like, oh man, this is amazing. Yeah, she was clearly a bad guy, but her it made no sense. The fact that she was a double agent working with the bad guy all made all the actions she did in the movie make no sense. Like usually you would have it where like her actions don't make sense. And then it's revealed that she's the double agent. You're like, oh, now it all makes sense. This was the opposite. <laughs> Everything she did made sense. Like, yeah, protected. Yeah, get him out. Yeah. And then it turns out she was working with the bad guy with the baby sharks. <laughs> it's like they were looking for like a aha moment. And like that was the best they could come up with. Like it like it was it was changed halfway through the script. Oh, she's she's the double agent now. It's like, aha. And then okay. nobody like, this doesn't throw them for a loop. The right. unwarranted gun battle at the end will. Oh man. Okay, but we're talking schlock. So I have a picture. It's I labeled it oh dad. We can pull it up. Oh, the actual dad. quote is oh dad, some things never change. Okay, which we got to take this quote for what it implies. He goes out the window and he pulls up a string that has a suitcase on it. But this would only work in Venice. So it's implying that his dad always hangs suitcases full of important info out of a back window. But some dude's just walking down an alley and sees this like <laughs> eye level suitcase and just takes it like, oh, dad, some things never change. Like it's, it's like dad's always forgetting his glasses. Yeah, always. it's like it's like that. But it's. It's about hiding something in water outside of a window. Like this is the only place on earth where this would work, but it's implied that he does this everywhere. Well, my thought was uh, I, my brain immediately went to toilet. He's probably always hiding things in the toilet. Like could be right in the, in the, I can't in the tank tank about hiding it. Like in the toilet, it, it was just his delivery. And then what it actually turned out to be that I just, I cracked up, man. This is when the movie had me. I'm like, this is this is bad. Pr this prior is to shock. that, before he before he went out the window, he he's like looking around because they're like looking for clues, and he's like, "My dad was always very meticulous, meticulous, <laughs> like like OC, has OCD." Well, and like, or, why did they throw? Why did they tear up his uh, room looking for stuff when they're the ones who got him killed because he wasn't leading them to the treasure fast enough? Because of the shark watchdogs, which they're <laughs> denying exist, there are no sharks in Venice. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know who can say? Here's an area I want to go to, and I want to spend a little bit of time, a little bit of time in uh, the the treasure trove. Once they find the treasure, when he comes up out of that hole and he's walking around, number one, uh, there's there's sunlight in there. There's daylight peeking through, which implies that like there's another way in. Right, you could you could get there maybe from the street. I don't know, um, but the whole place has these traps in it, which very cool. Uh, I, I dig it. Here's the thing: he uh, like the traps aren't dangerous. Like the, finally, finally they killed a guy in the end, but he avoids all the traps not because he's quick or smart, but just because he like shuffles his feet maybe. Well, if you if you we have a picture of the booby trap, so we can pull it up and talk about this. The trigger point is before the spikes, right? The trigger point should be on the same level as the spikes. So when you step on it, they come out. But if it's like three feet away and you step on it, then the spikes come out. And you're like, oh, thanks. For, thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And not not once, but like twice. It's just like, who who are these here for? Maybe. Well, and then people. That also insinuates if you don't step on the trigger point, like they don't come out. So you could just walk through no problem. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like the whole, it's not a trigger plate. It's one trigger thing. And it's like <laughs> raised up above everything else. <laughs> but he knows about this and the bad guy is following him in there and he warns the bad guy about it instead of using it to kill the bad guy right away. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that was a, a very weird sequence because he, he's looking at the bad guy as he comes into the treasure trove and he's like, I made a mistake. I didn't, or I let you live or I helped you survive or whatever. And it, and it kind of sounds like, Oh, maybe there's something going on to where like, they're going to have to team up to survive in some way. But the, the bad guy of course immediately turns on him and because I'm, he's told to, 
Yeah, well, duh. Um, and to their credit, they did use a trap, something that they established earlier in the movie uh, to kill him. I don't think they established that trap. No, they didn't establish that trap, but they established traps. They also used a lot of cool weapons from the crusade that were in that area. Like that whole sequence wasn't shot very well, but the idea of it was really cool. Yeah, the, we we have a picture of a sword. This actually cracked me up because uh, Stephen Baldwin, he like grabs a sword and you're thinking like, oh, cool sword fight. And then he like stumbles out behind the treasure, like holding it like, ooh, <laughs> buddy, you should have ran some laps before taking this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're running out of wind, brother. Uh, and then then of course he immediately loses it. We we have another picture after this, which calls into question uh what these ancient swords were made of. Surely they weren't made out of, of wood or uh steel because they seem to bend rather easily. Here we go. The uh this is this is the axe that he hits the sword with. Did it chip it? Did it did it hit steel and go pating? Nope. It bent it like a uh, like a perhaps a cardboard prop. Huh. 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 You don't say. Huh. Which is fine. Cardboard props exist. That's how we make movies. But the fact that someone the uh, a team of people was filming this and they're like, that ah, that's all right. This movie has shark in the Probably title. It's all right. It had. What was that? This is probably the only prop that they had. Yeah, they like, oh. Do you so, know how much Bulgarian dollars this cost us? We got to use it. So normally we've been having some philosophical questions or just questions about the movie and like fan theories and all. I got nothing. So my only question for you guys is how did his leg grow back? I I, mean, I think it was lose the leg. He clearly lost a leg and he lost more blood than a human body contains. Yeah. He was eaten by that shark three times and we see his leg floating down and then we, we see him in bed and I'm like, okay, he's going to have like a peg leg for the rest of the film. That's going to be awesome. Right. Nope. I, I, no, he I, just walks right out. Like it's regrown. I think it's one of two things. I think either that was actually a dream and he he passed out due to loss of blood. Fair and, enough. And they were able to fish him out. And this is like what he like hallucinated or whatever. Um, or that, you know, like when you're eating and you get something caught in your beard and you pick it out. Uh, that's what happened with the shark. The, that was just a leg. That's his dad's leg. That is the remnants of his father. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so we found he body. dislodged his father's leg in fighting with the shark. And by fighting with the shark, we mean getting bitten and then shredded and ripped apart. I think, I think he stabbed it in the nose. <laughs> I think that happened. So, so, so what I, what I took from that was the first thing that Darby said. Um, I, I do feel like, he probably passed out in the middle of that whole scenario and we don't see him getting rescued, but that's kind of like where his mind went when he passed out. Yeah. Cause you yeah. show like he didn't get like bit, like on like the arm or whatever. And they do like show some sort of remnants of an injury from that. They don't really <laughs> dwell on it too much or play on it too much, but they did try to show some sort of remnants of like, Oh, you were attacked by a shark. I'm and bleeding, I'm but I can move. Still fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Shark so, victims. No you know what I think it is? Around. I think that it was uh, reused footage from some other death that they had in the film, and Absolutely. they just put it in there. And then afterwards, they're like, "Oh man, we got a leg. Oh man, really? We didn't have any other any other I, footage." I don't think that they went, "Oh man," at all. I think they're like, "Yeah, all right. <laughs> sure, <laughs> that happens." Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think they looked at it twice. I think they did it and then they <laughs> submitted it and someone else put it in to the larger movie as a whole, and then they just they put it to the presses. Oh bad. man. It's good stuff. It's good so, stuff. So uh yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have any big philosophical takeaways from this. Uh if you're interested in making movies. I think I think you could make something at least as good as Shark and Venice. So uh, 
hold that tight and take it out into the world with you. Uh, guys, what are your last thoughts? Uh, uh, Chris, hit me with your last thoughts and then we'll do Lance. Uh, you know, there's some really cool stuff in this. I don't know if there was any source material. It feels like a script that was written in the 80s and they unearthed it and decided to make it in 2008. And that's kind of cool. So uh, I don't hate this as much as Darby does. In fact, uh, it left a smile on my face, although I'll, I'll never watch it again. Yeah, for, for real. We got we to move through all these shark movies. That is that is the ultimate Just like goal. a shark, we, we don't stop moving. Yeah, we don't stop moving. We don't stop. Uh, so yeah, keep watching us so that we can do this for many years to come <laughs> and, and watch every terrible shark movie ever made. Uh, Lance, what are your, I, I know you have some big insights for this movie. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say big insights. Um, I, I do feel a lot like Chris in this regard though. Like this could have been a really good movie, uh, had it gone in one direction or the other, had they done mm -hmm. like an actual shark in Venice, like Chris was saying, you know, type scenario without the treasure and all that. It could have been a good shark exploitation movie, shark exploitation movie, <laughs> and stuck with like the National Treasure, Tomb Raider, you know, Indiana Jones type storyline. That mm -hmm. could have worked very well on its own merit. It didn't need shark anything in that regard. So it's it was almost a good idea. It's like a drive-through liquor store. It's almost a good idea. <laughs> It's it's just that drunk driver needs, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's almost a good idea. Uh, it's like it's like they want you to drink and drive. It's like they want you to make a bad movie. Uh, right. All right. So I think I think that's I think that puts a nice bow on everything. Uh, so this is our second movie for Shark Month. Well, last week we watched Jaws, the ultimate classic. Next week we are watching uh santa jaws so christmas in july i think we're gonna have a special uh christmas podcast dump uh, where where we do our podcast uh, at if uh if you listen on spotify you're gonna get some treats um make sure you tell us the shark movie we need to watch so we can do that week after next uh anyway i am darby ellis lewis wilson this is chris anonymous this is Lance the Obscure Movie Guy. Check out his channel. We have been compelled by Schlock. And we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Schlock, 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 schlock. Schlock, 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 schlock. Schlock. I am compelled by Schlock.